Uh, I'm Ben. I'm the intern with the Buell Club, and I'm also their personal trainer. Um, this is another educational video that I'll be keeping up with each week. And this week's topic is warming up. So we'll, we'll talk about how to warm up um, so that you're getting the best out of it that you can. Uh, and then we'll also talk about some of the benefits of warming up. So first and foremost, let's go over benefits. Um, everybody likes to hear the benefits to doing something. So we'll talk about that. Um, from a cardiovascular perspective, like from your circulatory system's perspective, um, it gets your breathing rate up and it gets your body temperature up and it also increases um, the blood flow to working muscle tissue. And so in doing that, it, uh, it helps your cardiovascular system kind of prime itself to be challenged with the much harder um, series of activity, which is your planned exercise. Um, that'll be following the warm up rather than just going cold turkey right into the warm up or uh, right into your workout for the day. Um, some other benefits is in your nervous system. So it honestly can help calm your nerves a little bit if you're a little nervous about working out. I know for myself, um, I've had quite a few uh, like weightlifting sessions or, or even running sessions and conditioning sessions where I was actually nervous to attempt some of the, the heavy weights or um, some of the uh, the like max effort conditioning sessions that I did in, in, in like wrestling, for example. So it can kind of help calm your nerves down a bit there. But it what it also does is increase the recruitment of um, uh, motor end plates and and what that is, is basically like where each nerve comes down and touches a, the body of, of a muscle um, that it innervates, it, it activates more of those so that you go into your exercise session um, with more working muscle tissue activated and primed with, say, for example, for like lack of a better term, you basically have more light switches turned on that are ready to work, um, that have the lights ready to work or something like that. So there's some benefit there as well. And um, something else that you, I think everybody would, would like to hear is that warm-ups and doing them properly are also associated with better performance and decreased likelihood of injury. So whether you're an athlete or whether you're an everyday gym enthusiast, doing a warm-up will decrease your likelihood short-term and long-term for uh, developing an injury. Um, it can do that in a few ways. Uh, sh in the short term, for example, um, it can basically do that by making you be more alert, but also your joints. So if any of you have like stiff knees, for example, Warming up can help your knees move a bit better um, rather than going right into like the pounding of like a brisk walk for for 35 minutes or something like that. Or if you're like a runner, it can help save your knees a little bit before going into just straight into a run. Um, how that occurs is a by acting by activating that uh, muscle tissue. So the muscle tissue surrounding the joint can act with more force and therefore um, respond better to each like to each stress placed on or to each stress of tension placed on the muscle tissue itself and on the body as, as a whole so it takes some stress off of the joint itself um, also it can do that by uh, by decreasing the viscosity of joint fluid so what that means is, um, now I'm not saying that this is actually what it's like, uh, I'm, I'm just using this as an example, but um, what, what that basically looks like is like, say you took a can of peanut butter, okay, and then you took a bottle of olive oil and you tried to swirl them around. So if you took the bottle of olive oil, it would swirl around just fine and 
and it would probably do like a little whirlpool thing, and it would move a lot. That's got a very low viscosity. So it having a very low viscosity means that it can move better. It 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 isn't like like going through mud. Whereas if you tried to to swirl peanut butter, it's not going anywhere. It's not going to move. So before a warm up, you can kind of think of the fluid in your joints as peanut butter. Not I'm not saying that that's actually what it's like. Just a metaphor so that you can like you can visualize the benefit in your head and the change in your head. So before a warm up, it's peanut butter inside the joints, and after a warm up, it's olive oil inside the joints, which is probably a closer representation to what joint fluid actually looks like. So um, that being said. Uh, what are some ways that you can warm up effectively? So what I like to do and what I've been taught to do and what literature supports pretty darn well is called the RAMP protocol. What the RAMP protocol is, is basically a outline for how you should warm up before each session. It's a general layout of how to warm up for, before any sporting event, any exercise session, or what have you. Um, so, for example, uh, actually, I got, I got, a, I got, I switched up the order of things in my head there a bit. Sorry, not an example just yet. Um, specifically, what the RAMP protocol stands for is raise, activate, and mobilize, and then potentiate. So raise is referring to your body temperature. It's also referring to your heart rate and generally to your activity level. So um, you're not going to want to like uh, skip that part because then it'd be like you just went for a run after you did some light stretching. Well, you didn't really raise your activity level there. You just kind of mobilized. So you kind of skipped two steps and then went right into your run. Um, so how I do stuff like that is I like to incorporate raise and activate and mobilize kind of into the same, the same step per se of my warm up. Um, because honestly, for me, uh, warming up's pretty boring. <laughs> um, I do enjoy a good warm up and I appreciate a good warm up, but for me, a warm up, warming up's pretty boring. So I try to I try to just make it as as quick as possible, but without losing effectiveness. So how I do that is I'll I'll do something like um like a brisk walk for myself, and then periodically through the brisk walk I'll do some dynamic stretches. So let's take for example the uh the Tabata workout that I posted here in my kitchen the other day. Um, in the in that workout, the movements that I did were push-ups, air squats, and uh, sit-ups. I don't remember the order, so don't quote me on that. Uh, but and basically, what I'm saying is, in order to raise my heart rate, raise my body temperature, and raise my activity level, as well as activate the muscle tissue I'm planning to train and mobilize the joints I'm planning to use. I kind of did that all in one step. So I I went on the on a brisk walk like I told you and during it I I did some dynamic stretches. Some of those dynamic stretches were simple stuff like the Michael Phelps hug thing um to get my my pecs warmed up a bit. Um other stuff was a bit more specific like like my back's been pretty tight lately so I did um, I did some side bends called the uh, banana stretch um, to kind of loosen up my my low back a bit there, um, and I kind of just worked my way down uh, my my whole body until I got back to my apartment. Um, so I did some other things. One of my favorite things to do, uh, just favorite things to do for myself because I I know it's what I need is. Uh, a stretch called scoop the grapes. So you you just walk and um, as you take each step, you kind of like plant your heel um, and 
scoop the grapes with your hands, which is the equivalent to like reaching down towards your toes. Um, but with the with the other leg, so the leg that is back that you're not stretching, um, for that one you allow a slight bend. So I do maybe like 20, 30 steps of those or so and and then continue on that walk. I, I think at some parts, if I remembered right, I jogged a bit because um, I knew I would be talking some before that video. So I think I did do some jogging as well. Point being, um, all those stretches that I did were dynamic. They weren't static stretches. Dynamic stretches help to prime uh, your, your joint tendons and your muscle tissue um, for increased performance levels. So it basically, uh, at your tendon, it basically tells the Golgi tendon organ um, not to do its job, which is an, an inhibitory uh, action towards muscle contraction. It feels tension being pulled on the tendon, and it says, whoa, stop, and it tells the muscle to relax. So warming up kind of helps that not happen. But also, the other flip side to that, where the Golgi tendon organ says, don't contract, the muscle spindle, which in in um, in most muscles, it runs the length of the muscle tissue. Um, and what that does is when it feels a stretch on the muscle, it basically snaps it back. So it, uh, it senses that reflex coming, or it, it senses that um, that stretch, and it sends a, a reflexatory signal up to your uh, central nervous system, your brain and spinal cord, and it says, hey, there's a lot of tension here, like, you need, you need to, or, hey, there's a lot of stretch here, you need to, you need to contract this muscle, and so then your muscle contracts, and um, you simply capitalize on that by doing the stuff that I said, generally, uh, the, um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought, sorry. Um, you capitalize on that by doing that uh, raise, activate, and mobilize stuff, like I said. Um, and then, so the next thing that I did in the warm-up was I, uh, I I came back into my apartment here, and I just did a couple practice reps of, of like, push-ups, but I did them scaled back a bit. So I did them... Um, leaned over on my kitchen counter with my hands there. So I was kind of doing push-ups like this um, instead of doing them on the floor just yet. And then for air squats, um, for those ones, personally for myself, I don't really need to do a huge warm-up before I go into um, a full deep squat. Uh, I, I just have really good mobility and stuff. Um, so for that one, I, I simply got down into a deep squat and hung out there for two or three seconds and then sprung back up. Um, and then for the sit-up, I just did a plank for a few a few rounds of like 20 seconds. And that that's how I activated and potentiated. So the ramp protocol raise, activate, and mobilize, and potentiate. Potentiate is basically a fancy term for... Um, progressively priming muscle tissue to work as at, at as high of a level as possible. So for an example of what that would be is like me coming in and doing those scaled back exercises, um, which doesn't quite tax muscle tissue as much for me, um, and then go into to that Tabata workout. Another example of that would be like if I was doing a powerlifting workout, for example, like for myself, that's, you know, what I've, what I've generally tr been training the past few months and stuff. Um, if I was doing that workout, for example, let's say I was benching, um, like, you know, I don't, I don't know, like 185 for, for five sets of five or something like that. Um, I wouldn't just go in there and slap 185 pounds on the bar and start start benching. I would start with the bar and then start with slightly heavier weight, slightly heavier weight, slightly heavier weight until I get to 185, and then I'll start my actual workout. 
So that's kind of how that works. And, um, and there are a few benefits to that. Like it prepares your muscle tissue to, to actually do the skill that you're trying to do. Um, and that kind of plays a role in that injury prevention as well. Um, something else that it does is it gets, it gets you in your head into the mindset of practicing those movements so that when you do them for, um, for a workout where you'll be experiencing fatigue and maybe your technique diminishes a little bit under that fatigue, um, you now have proper technique in your head and you know what it feels like. So, um, potentiating also has a few benefits there as well. Um, if you want, you can look this up on YouTube and simply do like, um, like say you're gonna go for a run. You could look up like ramp warm up for a, uh, for a runner or something like that. And generally how I like to do, how I like to meet the criteria for this, like I said, is do the um, raise part. So raising your heart rate, body temperature, and, um, and uh, your activity level, um, activate, activating your muscle tissue to work, and then potentiate, or, um, and, and then mobilize. So, so make sure your joints are mobile enough to do those exercises. Generally, how I like to do those is I like to mix something aerobic and that's how you generally do the uh, raise portion is with something aerobic. So I'll mix something aerobic with some dynamic stretches and um, and maybe some light exercises with the muscles I'm planning to involve in my exercise session. And then I'll go and potentiate. And so I'll do I'll do some some variation of uh, climbing in intensity up to the um, the intensities that I'm planning on working out at. Um, some general requirements, well, I shouldn't say requirements, but some general guidelines of a warm up is that they're included before every session. Um, they last at least five to 10 minutes or longer if need be. So for example, like a very highly trained endurance athlete would probably need more than five to 10 minutes to warm up. Um, and, uh, and at the end of each session, they're also followed up with a cool down consisting of also five to 10 minutes, um, which is more so meant to bring you back down to as close to your resting values, like heart rate as possible. Um, so, uh, to kind of go off of that, um, the ramp protocol is pretty useful. Um, it's a general layout, like I said, and you can really make it fit just about anything. Um, just make sure you're getting that five to 10 minutes of aerobic activity with the uh, some dynamic stretches in there. And then also work up to the intensity you're planning on working out on. So I uh, hope, hope you found this helpful and I'll see you next week for the next video topic.